it is so lovely to have so many new faces around here. As of last week, my channel has grown a little bit, which is really nice. We have now cracked the 5,000 subscribers threshold, which is just a nice little number that doesn't really mean anything, but means a lot to me. So thank you to all of you who are new here and who decided to join for the ride. It's quite fun. I thought the occasion was worth me wearing something a little bit celebratory, so <laughs> I'm wearing my pink poofy plaps. That is really fun, but also really warm, I have to say. So let's see how long I can last in this. As you all know, I'm a very easily influenceable person, unfortunately. I often see things that arrest me for like an undefined amount of time until I finally decide to give in and make it. So this week's approach isn't quite the same as last week. This is not a I see it, I want it project, but it is definitely influenced by a few things that I've come across recently. Today, I'm going to make another iteration of my neck halter dress that I'm going to wear for the family wedding that I mentioned um, that is going to happen later in the summer. I need to make another iteration of this because I have now digitized the pattern and I need to test the digitized version of the pattern because it's changed a little bit from my hand drafted version. And I thought I'd show you the outcome of that. If you are interested in fashion, which inevitably you guys are. You know that Sophia Ritchie married very recently and it had the internet in a chokehold and it's like everywhere still. I think it's like it's been a month or so since she got married but still photos from her dresses and her wedding guests are floating around all over the internet. And I came across this absolutely breathtaking lilac beauty crafted by Miss Sohi which I did not know about until recently. I don't know, but they're blowing up. They're dressing absolutely everybody right now. Here are just a few people that have worn Missoe recently. But this dress in particular that was worn by one of Sophia's wedding guests is just absolute grace and beauty. And I am obsessed with lilac. I have been for the longest time, which is such a tragedy because lilac isn't really my color. <laughs> As in like, I think my skin tone and just my overall like complexion isn't the best for this type of lilac. I think it works really well on people like this person here, whose name I don't know. When you have like a bit of more olive toned skin, maybe a little bit darker, this looks absolutely beautiful. Dark hair, dark skin, that's it. But that doesn't keep me from making today's neck halter dress in this absolutely arresting lilac satin. This is the lilac of my dreams. It's cool toned, it's shiny, it's mystical, mysterious, it's everything I want it to be. So I have already cut out all of my pieces. I'm hopeful that this is gonna be a very quick assembly process because I've done this now about three times. I will take you along and then we'll see what the outcome is like. And I have the very strong feeling that this is going to be everybody's bridesmaid dress of their dreams. <laughs> because it's shiny satin, it's a bridesmaid color, and it's unicolored. So one of you has recently actually left a comment on one of my vlogs because I was so unsure as to whether or not to use my Liberty Silk for the final wedding guest outfit for myself. And she said, rightly so, that if I make it in a uni color, it's gonna look like a bridesmaid dress. And it will. I know it will. And I'm here for it. So for all of you out there who are bridesmaids this year or who will have bridesmaids this year, this is for you. The first thing is to grab the top shell and lining piece for the front, which looks like this. So we have two pleats or a pleat and a dart here on the side. For this one today, I'm going to try to do two pleats instead of a dart here because I think it's going to look nicer. So the first thing we need to do is to open this up. So you can see we have a symmetrical piece and we have a fold line up here. So the idea is that we need to sew this V shape first. This is the first thing we need to do. So this fabric is super delicate. So again, clips would be ideal here. I haven't ordered them yet. This is a memo to myself that I need to order some of these fabric clips so I don't have to use my pins on these super delicate fabrics. I'm going to use a stitch length of three. Now you snip the V here before you take it to your iron and press the seams. Okay, so now this is once and overturned. We have something a little bit looking like this. And you can see the way I press this is that the seam is looking more towards one side than the other. And that is so that I can identify what is the front and what is the back. Now that we have that, I'm gonna go ahead and sew the keyhole here. So basically what we need to do is to 
place the two seams on top of each other like this and now pin them together so that they're dead center on top of each other. I do this more by feeling the seams than seeing them. And now we can sew a second stitch up this center front seam and we do it on the side of the front side of the piece. So this is the back and this is the front and I'm gonna sew on this side of the existing seam. Okay, now I can actually place the pleats and I'm doing this by simply folding them according to the notches in my pattern and it's a little bit harder now because they're not pressed yet so this is how they would be pressed down like I said what would normally be a dart or what I had planned to be a dart I'm just gonna pleat as well this time and I'm doing it so that the pleats basically look upwards now I'm making sure that everything is symmetrical left and right which it seems to be and to make things a little bit easier for myself I'm now gonna go ahead and baste the sides down in a distance that is a little bit less than the seam allowance that I gave so I'm gonna do half a centimeter all right so we now have the front completed and it looks a little something like this quite promising I hope <laughs> now we continue with the back and the back is simple yet not so simple we have these pieces here putting the paper pattern back on so you can see what I mean so this is the side this is the center back and we have a fold line on top so when I open this it looks like that now how do we attach this front side with this back side is the question I also can see that the sides are actually not matching up interestingly the back is way too long so that's something I need to note to change in my paper pattern and now you see why I need to make like several iterations of my patterns because this is what happens usually so the back is about three centimeters too the back side that is is about three centimeters too high and I need to note that on my little smart sheet I take my notes um center back side seam shorten by three centimeters okay got it now this is my solution to the side seam finish and please ignore this uh, I need to shorten the back piece down here but you can see it's nicely finished on the inside and the outside and now I'm going to show you how I did that so I'm grabbing this said back piece and I'm opening it like this and then I'm placing it along the side seam that I want to cover up making sure the right sides are facing like this and now this notch here indicates where the fold is right so I need to make sure that this notch is flush with the neckline of my front piece and I'm gonna place a few pins to keep this positioned and now I'm wrapping this back piece all the way over to the other side to sandwich my front piece in between the two layers of the back piece now this here is the difficult section because I need to make sure I'm not like bulging it up anyway in any way it needs to stay straight so I need to place a needle up here immediately so I know where I need to land with my seam and then the rest I'm just again pinning and now I'm placing the sandwich in my machine have a beautiful finish like this which I can go press now the top is actually almost completed now the only thing that's missing is the shawl that keeps it up but I'm gonna do that one last the thing that I'm gonna do now is to actually join the top with the skirt which we have here now the skirt normally has this um, tip here so I'm placing top and skirt right sides touching and I have a notch in my side seams as well as in my center front point in my waist in the skirt and I'm starting out by pinning the center front of skirt and top together and then I'm just starting to pin everything along the waist This is where we're at. I am absolutely smitten with the top. It is perfect. It is actually really, truly, 
truthfully perfect. This is really what I wanted. I think it looks so chic and high-end because the pleats are so controlled and look intentional and this is exactly what I wanted and the rest is very well fitted so it looks really great. Lilac is actually something I can wear, like this type of lilac, which I didn't know. The only thing that I'm a little bit upset about is that I didn't cut the skirt longer. So at the moment, the front of the skirt is 75 and the sides of the skirt is 85 to get this like half moon shape in the hem, basically. And now I'm seriously considering going and buying more of this fabric. It's only 10 pounds a meter, so it wouldn't be like a financial damage to do it. I think what I'll do is I go and get more fabric, honestly, because this is really cute. I do have like some strips of fabric left that I cut thinking I could potentially add a ruffle to the hem but I don't think that that would look good with the shape of the skirt in the hem. It would take away from the simplicity of the dress so for real now I think I'm gonna get more fabric. Okay, so we're entering the finishing line and I just grabbed this zipper here from my stash that I'm now gonna try and insert here as cleanly as possible. So in terms of how long the zipper should be, this is really up to you. I believe I'm gonna go for about, I'm gonna shorten it a little bit because it's quite long here. So what I'm doing is I sew a couple times over the zipper and I can do this because it's a plastic zipper. Cut the rest off of the zipper and then what I like doing is just melt the ends a little bit, make everything melt together, something like this. So now that I know how long the zipper is, I know where I need to close my skirt. So I'm going to mark that and then I can close the center back. Okay, so now that the center back is closed, we can insert the zipper. And the way to go is to place the top of the zipper at the very end of the dress because we want to make sure that it zips all the way up, pinning it right sides touching to the actual dress. Then I'll take this first side and baste the zipper in. Okay. One side is successfully basted in. I grab an erasable gel pen and I mark where the waist seam is on the other side of the zipper. So when I open it, I can still see where this point needs to match up with the waist. And now I go ahead and start pinning the other side. And this mark that I just made is gonna help me understand where the waist is. Okay, now this is pinned in. I can open the zipper. This is a very slippery dress. <laughs> And now I can take this other side and baste it as well. Okay, that's the first step done. If you now have, unlike me, a zipper foot, you go ahead and use that. I don't have that, so I will have to sew the rest in by hand. Alrighty guys, I feel like 
every other actress in any movie between 1993 and 2007 that had something to do with weddings. <laughs> you name it. 27 dresses, my best friend's wedding. What's another one? All those, you know, all those movies, you know them. I'm still obsessed with the color. It is absolutely gorgeous. I am obsessed with the fit of this dress. I think the top is so nice. When I started out making this, I didn't think that I would end up here, but I did. So I'm really quite pleased. The final step to releasing this pattern is to actually film the tutorial, which I am actually going to do with the final silk that I'm gonna use for my final outfit. It's happening. <laughs> I've been talking about it for a while, I know, I'm sorry, but it is going to happen. I do not know yet if I'm gonna release it next week or the week after. I'm also going away for a couple of days, so it might be that I have to postpone it a little bit, but I'll keep you on the edge of your seats because I'll do it as a surprise, I guess. You'll find out when it comes out. Tell me if you'd wear this to a wedding. Tell me if you would wear this if you were a bridesmaid. Tell me if you would make your bridesmaids wear this. And love to chat to you in the comments as always. See you next time.